So, hi everyone, thanks for coming. Um, thank you for joining us today. We've had a great day. The turnout's been fantastic. Um, I do want to thank Everett Gundas. I don't see, here he is over here. Doing an awesome job uh, emceeing. Uh, MC the event. So thank you, Everett. I do want to draw your attention to the Derby Squares over here. It's kind of empty still. So when I get done talking, <laughs> maybe we can make a trip over to the Derby Square. Um, before I get started today, though, I do want to uh, acknowledge, like I did last year at the uh, Oceanside event and at our field hockey event, that events like this for, for our family are, are bittersweet. Uh, well, we're here today because our daughter, Abby, uh, died suddenly from an anaphylactic reaction. Everything we do is about trying to stop that from ever happening again. You see the hashtag stop anaphylaxis, but that really is our mission. We're all about making sure that never happens again. Uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge that here up front and, and, and then we can get on to some other uh, maybe more happy things, more smiley things. Um, uh, before I get, be I'm going to give a few thank yous and then I'm going to give you an update on our goals. Uh, and then the Wies Institute, Jim Nemi and John Osborne are in the crowd somewhere. I don't think they took off. But we have some very exciting news about the Wies Institute. Uh, they're right over here. Um, and, and they're going to give you an update, a uh, little bit of an overview of the Wies and a sense for the project that they're working on. Um, but before, I, before I get too far into it, I do want to offer some thank yous. Uh, first, I'd like to thank our sponsors. When we started planning for this event, we, we talked about taking corporate sponsorship uh, to a new level from last year. We had a little bit of participation last year, but this year we really talked about sponsorship putting us over the top. And, and you can see that evidence here on the, on the banner over your head, all the local businesses uh, that contributed. Most of them are local to the Metro West area. I hope you remember their support if you need their services. There's banks and doctors and restaurants and, and uh, all that stuff. In particular, though, I would like to thank our gold sponsors. Uh, there's four of them. I'd like to acknowledge them here today. They, they really made an effort to put us over the top. First is uh, Greg Speck, Speck Physical Therapy. Uh, Greg is a lifelong friend. He, he, he's known Amy since they were this big. They ke he came to our wedding. <laughs> this big. Yeah. Um, uh, he was the first gold sponsor we had. He didn't hesitate when Amy asked. Uh, and I saw Greg earlier, but I do want to thank Greg uh, for that. Um, the second one is Arteriosite. He's way in the back there with a shiny head. Uh, <laughs> Arteriosite is a Hopkinton-based biotech company. Don Braun runs the company. There's some employees here today. Uh, Don also has a huge heart for, for charity, and, and he, he's helped other local charities get off the ground, offering a space, and he really, uh, really made an effort here to help us with a significant contribution at the gold level. So thank you to Arteriosite. Harvey Waste Management, they sponsored us last year. Some of the Harvey family is here. I see Livy right here taking pictures. Uh, they sponsored us at Oceanside. Uh, and they took us up to a goal level this year, so I want to thank that, uh, thank them as well. And finally, my brother Scott, who was just standing here, uh, yeah, thank you, Scott. He 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 runs a landscaping company in the, in the side in the summer. He he gave us a, a gold sponsorship as well, so thank you, to Scott. Before I move off sponsorship, though, I do want to offer just some late-breaking news on sponsors. Uh, we had some big news in the last few weeks, where TJX Foundation became our first. Uh, corporate sponsor. So Christy Strickland is here somewhere with some of her, her one of her daughters and a friend. Uh, TJX Corporation, TJX Foundation uh, became our uh, Keep Smiling for Abby's very first uh, corporate sponsor. That's a big milestone for us, and I want to acknowledge that. <laughs> next, next, I'd like to thank the uh, the event planning team. Uh, Gene Birchman organized a very sm uh, a small army of uh, volunteers to get us all set up here. We had a very small two-hour window to get set up, and Gene pulled all that together. Uh, and those of you who signed up to clean up, don't forget, but we need your help there, too. Uh, Jenny Bogart and Kim Bianchi spent the long, cold winter chasing up inventory for our raffle and silent auction in the back of the room. So thank you to Jenny and Kim. Jen Jones drove event messaging. She's my cousin. She also continues to help me with uh, nonprofit management uh, advice and counsel. When we started, I mentioned this a second ago, when we started planning this event in January, uh, we asked Tracy Murphy to step up the corporate sponsorship, take responsibility and get us a, a nice basket of corporate sponsors. Tracy over-delivered. The sign barely fits. They barely fit all on the sign, so thank you, Tracy Murphy. Kim Puig uh, was instrumental in designing the new t-shirts that are for sale over here, the tie-dye design, so thank you to Kim. <laughs> Matthew Sacklad, a freshman at UMass Amherst, conceived and designed the Derby Board Square concept, and uh, he's sitting at the end of the table running the show over here, so thank you, Matthew. 
And then finally, I'd like to thank the anchor of the planning team. Laura Sacklad uh, stepped in January and said, I'll take responsibility for planning this event. She does it as a day job. She's an event planner marketing uh, expert. Uh, so L Laura really delivered. I can't say enough about how hard she worked, her commitment to our cause and our family. Uh, I don't see her in the crowd, but Laura should raise your hand. Everyone say a big hand for Laura Sacklad. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, we run Keep Smiling for Abby as a fund of the Foundation for Metro West. Amy and I rely on an operating committee to help us with different areas of specialty. And I want to thank the rest. The, some of those have already been mentioned. Uh, there's a couple others that uh, continue to support us. I just want to acknowledge them here today. Uh, Joan Bannon, Ben Matthews, Kathy and Mark Rocha, uh, Scott Sanferson, and John Zach. So thank you for your continued support. And finally, I think it's finally, uh, thank you to Weston Nurseries. Now, Weston Nurseries loaned us the plants you see around here. They really dressed up the event. Uh, they, they let us have anything we wanted. We took it out last night. We're going to return it. But thank you to Weston Nurseries. Please remember that. Oh, I have one more. One more thank you to Nancy at the, uh, at the Warren Center and the staff of the Warren Center. It's a great venue for very great things here, so thank you. So last year, I told you that our goals are to fund research into technology-enabled early detection of anaphylaxis, increase awareness, and, and help the community, support the community. Uh, we've made a lot of progress on those, uh, on those areas. I thought I'd give you a quick update. On the awareness front, we've participated in 12 events. We go to these events and we evangelize the importance of early detection and treatment of anaphylaxis. We hand out pamphlets, we demonstrate auto-injectors, and we just talk to people about how important it is to see the signs early and treat. Uh, those are time investments. We have volunteers that help us set up tables and talk to, talk to people that pass through, uh, and those things continue. Uh, last month, we did two education programs uh, in Southboro with a, a guy named Kyle Dine, who does a puppet show for little kids on food allergies and anaphylaxis. Very well received. And we continue to work with allergyhome.org. Our support to the community continues to grow. In December, we donated over 3,000 toys to Children's Hospital. M most of the people in this room probably donated from Hopkinton and local communities. Lori Collins, I saw her earlier. Lori Collins runs that for us with some help from student leaders. When Lori and the, and the, and the kids arrived at Children's, uh, the service staff was overwhelmed with the number of toys they had. They literally overwhelmed the service staff at Children's. They couldn't believe this small little organization out in Hopkinton came up with 3,000 toys. Uh, I want to acknowledge that that really comes from you, and thank you very much. Last year, we funded two scholarships at Hopkinton High School for $1,000 each through the, the school's new Keep Smiling Award. It's a faculty-nominated type of an award, and a, and a scholarship accompanies it. Today, I wanted to announce, I'm happy to announce, that uh, we've decided to increase each scholarship by 50% to $1,500 to the two winners. This is, a, this is a reflection on the community and the give back that we want to give back to the community. The community has supported us as a family and as an organization, and we really want to give back to the community, so this is a reflection of that. So I think you'd agree we've made a lot of progress. I think I've saved the best for last, though. Funding research into technology-enabled early detection of anaphylaxis is our core principle. It's our core mission. It's something that we'll spend the vast majority of our resources on. The vast majority of all your support is going to go to funding this research. Uh, the reason for that is we think that something that, that could alert a patient to early detection might have saved Abby's life. The idea came from uh, a conversation between Ben Matthews, Amy, and I about a month after Abby died. We sat talking together with, with what could have happened, what might have been different, and, and the idea of monitoring came up. And so why aren't, we why aren't we monitoring these people? There's 15 million Americans at risk of anaphylaxis, and they're just left to their own assessment. They're left to assess that they don't feel good or they don't really feel right. They're, they're, they're left to assess, make this leap to a life-threatening situation. We think technology can solve that. The concept marinated a little bit for a few months. Ben then introduced us to some researchers at the Wies Institute. They're here today. We're right over there. I think they're still standing there. Um, the Wies Institute met with us three times in the last six months. They, they listened to our case. They listened to our story and they, they brainstormed with us on how we can solve this problem with technology. It's really an inspiring group of people. If you go and talk to them, you sit across the table, these are really smart people that, that know how to solve problems. And when they look across the table and they can solve a problem like this, they get really into it. Um, the 
best news for all. Here we go. I had to change the page. It was uh, something like print going on. Uh, get ready. Get ready. It's big. Um, so the best news of all is they've listened to us, and, and they've started a project. Two weeks ago, they started a project to create, this is a mouthful, an anaphylaxis auto detection and therapeutic device. This is a real project at a real lab in Boston, and these are the guys that are going to do it. I alluded to the numbers earlier, but they're, they're, they're staggering. 15 million people are at risk of anaphylaxis. Two kids in every classroom. One in 20 Americans are at risk of anaphylaxis. Medicine, bee stings, food, latex. Nothing like this exists. These guys are going to solve this problem. Today, Keep Smiling for Abby is, is very excited to announce a gift commitment of $25,021 to the Vs Institute to fund this project. When you think about where your money's going, those are the guys. That's where it's going. That's where it's going. Most of the money we raise is going to go to these guys to invent this device to save someone's life. Yeah. It's inspiring work. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very proud of our first year's accomplishments. We couldn't have done it without your support. I really, really appreciate it. Your continued support is amazing. It's, it's, it overwhelms us at times, um, it, but, but it's really inspiring at the same time. So thank you very much. The research plan, by the way, just as a footnote, is years. So I'm going to need your support for many years to come. I'll see you next year. <laughs> so before I turn the, the microphone over to Jim, I do want to say a few more words and thank two more people. Um, first is an unnamed Hopkinton official who offered, us, offered to get us a bid for the 119th Boston Marathon ran a couple of weeks ago. I don't know what strings he pulled, and I probably don't want to know. <laughs> but one Saturday in January, I got a three-word text. Three words. I got it. Then he or she quietly transferred the approved application to me on one condition. He didn't want anybody to know anything. So thank you to the unnamed Hopkinson official. I said he, but it might be a she. <laughs> but it's not, it's a he. Um, <laughs> finally, uh, I'd like to bring our runner up here that ran the marathon for us, Samantha Lee. <laughs> So as many of you know, uh, Samantha uh, is my son's girlfriend, but more importantly, she's an incredible young woman. Uh, when I first learned that I obtained the bib for the marathon in January, I had one thought, one thought. I had to find a runner, because it sure as hell, was, sure as hell wasn't going to be me. Um, I had some ideas, and before I could do anything, Samantha latched right onto it. She claimed the bib. There was no question. Samantha was going to run the race. Uh, she wanted to run it for Abby. She began training in January, the coldest winter on record in New England. Last week, completed Boston in just over five hours on a cold, miserable day. It was the worst day possible. She anchored our team of one. Uh, she's, it was an incredible effort. It was really, it was incredible. It was, it was great. I have, to, I have to add, this wasn't in my script, but I have to add, her, her dad's here. Doug, Doug Lee is here. Her dad laid out a, 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 a sort of an intersection points for us to meet Samantha along the route. We met her in Natick and we met her in Newton. Um, and then we start at the finish line. And so in this cold, miserable day, you've got 30,000 runners running, and here comes Samantha, which, I don't know, we, we thought we were going to help her along the marathon route. We thought we were going to help her boost her up, especially toward the end. And every time we saw her, and I hope you've seen the video that Amy posted on Facebook of Samantha, she, she hits the finish line, and she sees us, and she's got her hands up waving. And there's people that can't run. They're dragging their bodies along. And when Samantha sees us, she lights up and, and waves, and it was really uplifting for us to see her. Uh, so uh, it was really an amazing effort, Samantha. Samantha. Um, I do want to talk about the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. This is very impressive for a, for a uh, college kid, with due respect. Um, <laughs> she set a fundraising goal of $2,000. She hit it quickly. In a couple of weeks, she hit $2,000. I encouraged her to raise it to $5,000. She didn't blink. She took the challenge. Three weeks before the race, she eclipsed five grand. She blew it away. She received over 100 donations from California, New York, Florida, Connecticut, and of course, Massachusetts. Her final tally is almost $7,000, an incredible amount of money. Three times, more than three times. 
Uh, so congratulations, to Sam, and thank you. Thank you want to give that out? Yes. So many of you know the runners in, in Boston, may, maybe all, all marathons, they write their names in the, on the front of the shirts. We did a custom shirt for Sam, and, it, and she had scratched her name across the front. So we got you a new shirt. Just, I mean, you can train a little bit with it. And Amy put together a little collage here. You're not, if, for those of you that know Samantha, she's not a big person. She likes to, she likes to keep to herself, and she's kind of quiet. But she's accomplished a lot. We're really proud of her. We were going to do a big banner like that with pictures on it for you. But we gave you a little thing for your room, and you can, you can enjoy Thank that. You. And also a massage. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Sam. So I, I guess I want to conclude with thank you. You know, one of the things we learned quickly in the charity business is, is the most important thing to say is thank you. We really appreciate your support. Uh, it, it's been, like I said, overwhelming. I, I hope we'll see you again here next year. We do have a fundraiser in August. Our, our second annual field hockey event will be in August, uh, August 1st, if, unless it rains, and then it'll be Sunday the 2nd. Um, <laughs> Or maybe it's the It's in August. Come, come see us in August. Um, and I hope we continue to support our toy drive for children. It's a big deal for the community. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to turn the mic over to Jim. I've asked Jim, Mimi, and John to say a few words about the VEAS Institute so you guys can see where the money's going and the type of work that they do at the VEAS. So thank you again. Really appreciate you guys coming out. And fill the derby board. <laughs> So I'm just going to say a few words. Um, I need to start with a quick confession. I bid on the fishing trip as an anniversary gift to my wife. <laughs> she seasick and she's a vegetarian. So I bid twice. Someone's got to help her out. So I really appreciate it. So before this event, how many of you have heard about the Vies Institute before this event? No, that, that was what I thought. And I didn't understand. Well, that's OK. Uh, when the Wies Institute called me six years ago, I, it was actually Harvard University saying they were starting something new at Harvard. I said, oh, they finally found my graduate school application because I never heard back from them. But they were starting a new institute within Harvard. Mr. Hans-Jörg Wies um, had, was willing to make a very generous donation to start a new translational institute within Harvard University. And the goal of that was to take science from bench to bedside, basically not letting world-class science languish in universities, but getting them out into products and technologies to change healthcare, the environment, and the world. And I went in, I interviewed with them, and I was fortunate enough that they said, hey, come on, join us. And uh, this, this time of year is pretty special for me, because six years ago, to this day, I walked into the Wies Institute, and I said, where is it? There was nothing there. There was a bunch of money in the bank and there was empty lab benches and my boss said well you got to build this out so I said and she said and this is one of your first projects which was a technology that we developed for infant apnea which has many similar characteristics to what we're doing here of early detection and a therapeutic intervention and as I'm looking across these empty lab benches the panic sets in and I said well I got to get some help so one of the first calls I made was to John Osborne uh, to, to join our team, and he said no. Um, but I was dating at the time, and I was used to hearing no a lot, so I just kept at it, and a year and a half later, he said yes, and we've been a pretty dynamic team. We lead the medical group, which is one of six groups at the Wies Institute. You can check out the website, wies.harvard.edu. One of the special things about the Wies is it's not just a bunch of propeller heads at Harvard or MIT or another academic institution, and please don't take offense if you've gone to any of those academic institutions, but it's, it's a translational institute. It's a collaborative institute. You misspoke with one little word when you're up there that said we were going to solve this. No, we are going to tackle this issue. That's what the collaborative nature of the, the Wies Institute is all about. So we collaborate with over 10 institutions, including Children's Hospital. We're going to tackle this problem together. This is just a start, but I'd like to introduce John Osborne to introduce Project Abbey. Thank you, Jim, and thank you to the Benford family. Uh, it's a great honor to receive this uh, gift. Uh, and it is also a great challenge. You presented us with a grand challenge, and that is something at the VEAS that we, we enjoy. So uh, as Jim mentioned, we are a group, a really unique group of people. We're basically a bunch of engineers and scientists 
who are doing work that can quickly get out there to make a difference in people's lives. So we're not about uh, doing research that can look good on a resume or that can lead to scientific publications, although that's important. Our goal is to get that from academia to a product that can change people's lives. And that is what we plan to do with this gift. We're going to launch Project Abbey uh, in our group. Our group is called the Anticipatory Medical and Cellular Devices Platform. It's a bit of a mouthful. Basically, we build devices that sense changes in the body. Uh, we can build algorithms that sense something bad that's going to happen and then intervene to prevent that from happening. Uh, traditional medicine has often been reactive. So how do, we, how do we fix something that's occurred or how do we heal people after the fact? Ideally, we should be preventing those things from happening, and, and that's what our goal is. So we are going to be launching Project Abby. Our first step will be to work with Children's Hospital to monitor patients who are admitted to the hospital presenting with symptoms uh, like anaphylaxis or with anaphylaxis, and we can monitor them and use that as, as developing knowledge towards building our device. Our end goal will be a, a wearable device, something if you could envision like a, uh, maybe a, something you wear on your belt, or a, a chest strap, or maybe a, uh, some kind of uh, wristband, or sensors on or inside your body, something that's continuously monitoring your body. And when it senses the onset, the early onset of anaphylaxis, we could then auto-inject a dose of epinephrine to save lives. That will be our end goal, and I look forward to working on that project and getting it launched, and hopefully I'll meet you here in a year, and keep you updated on the progress. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks John, thank you. Uh, so I, that's, that's it for remarks, everyone. What, we have one more big event for this afternoon, that's the uh, ugly hat, I mean best hat uh, <laughs> award. Uh, Evren Gundes is gonna make the award, he's been observing all, the, all of you and looking for the best hat and someone's going to walk away with that prize right there. Uh, so thank you all for coming, um, and thank you for your support. The Keep Smiling for Abby Fund hosted a day at the Derby on the day of the Kentucky Derby. The event featured Derby squares, raffles, a silent auction, and more. The event raised around $30,000 in the fight against anaphylaxis. Stephen Benford, father of Abby Benford, who passed away from an anaphylactic reaction at the age of 15, announced that $25,021 will be a gift commitment to the Weiss Institute to fund Project Abby, a project to develop an anaphylaxis auto detection and therapeutic device. The concept marinated a little bit for a few months. Ben then introduced us to some researchers at the Weiss Institute. They're here today, right over there. I think they're still standing there. Um, the Wies Institute met with us three times in the last six months. They, they listened to our case, they listened to our story, and, and they, they brainstormed with us on how we could solve this problem with technology. It, it's really an inspiring group of people. If you go and talk to them, you sit across the table, these are really smart people that, that know how to solve problems. And when they look across the table and they can solve a problem like this, they get really into it. The best news of all is they've listened to us and, and they've started a project. Two weeks ago they started a project to create this is a mouthful, an anaphylaxis auto detection and therapeutic device. This is a real project at a real lab in Boston, and these are the guys that are going to do it. I alluded to the numbers earlier, but they're, they're, they're staggering. 15 million people are at risk of anaphylaxis, two kids in every classroom. One in 20 Americans are at risk of anaphylaxis. Medicine, bee stings, food, latex. Nothing like this exists. These guys are going to solve this problem. Today, Keep Smiling for Abby is, is very excited to announce a gift commitment of $25,021 to the Beast Institute to fund this project. And, uh, this, this time of year is pretty special for me because six years ago to this day, I walked into the Beast Institute and I said, where is it? There was nothing there. There was a bunch of money in the bank, and there was empty lab benches, and my boss said, well, you gotta build this out. So I said, and she said, and this is one of your first projects, which was a technology that we developed for infant apnea, which has many similar characteristics to what we're doing here, of 
early detection and a therapeutic intervention. And as I'm looking across these empty lab benches, the panic sets in. And I said, oh, I gotta get some help. So one of the first calls I made was to John Osborne uh, to, to join our team and he said no. Um, <laughs> but I was dating at the time and I was used to hearing no a lot. So <laughs> I just kept at it and a year and a half later, he said yes and we've been a pretty dynamic team. We lead the medical group, which is one of six groups at the VEAST Institute. You can check out the website, vs.harvard.edu. One of the special things about the VEAST is it's not just a bunch of propeller heads at Harvard or MIT or another academic institution, and please don't take offense if you've gone to any of those academic institutions, <laughs> but it's, it's a translational institute. It's a collaborative institute. You misspoke with one little word when you're up there that said we were gonna solve this. No, we are gonna tackle this issue. That's what the collaborative nature of the, the VEAST Institute is all about. So we collaborate with over 10 institutions, including Children's Hospital. We're gonna tackle this problem together. Platform, it's a bit of a mouthful. Basically, we build devices that sense changes in the body. Uh, we can build algorithms that sense something bad that's gonna happen and then intervene to prevent that from happening. Uh, traditional medicine has often been reactive, so how do, we, how do we fix something that's occurred or how do we heal people after the fact? Ideally, we should be preventing those things from happening, and, and that's what our goal is. So we are going to be launching Project Abby. Our first step will be, be to work with Children's Hospital to monitor patients who are admitted to the hospital presenting with symptoms uh, like anaphylaxis or with anaphylaxis, and we can monitor them and use that as, as developing knowledge towards building our device. Our end goal will be a, a wearable device, something if you could envision like a, uh, maybe a, something you wear on your belt or a, a chest strap or maybe a, uh, some kind of uh, wristband or sensors on or inside your body, something that's continuously monitoring your body. And when it senses the onset, the early onset of anaphylaxis, we could then auto-inject a dose of epinephrine to save lives.